What is going on everyone? So as you can see by the title of the video, we are going to be going over the three chest exercises that you need to be doing to grow and develop your chest, right? So I'm not going to say I have the, uh, the world's best chest over here, it's actually been something I've always lacked a little bit. So what I want to tell you guys is what I've had the most success with consistently in my own experience. So. I'm Joe Ingram from Ankle Athletics. Probably should introduce myself a little bit if you haven't already been familiar with the channel. Thank you for clicking on the video, but let's get into it. So the first exercise that we're going to be going over is a barbell flat bench. This is something that you guys probably would already kind of guess, but there's actually proven research, literature out there showing that the greater the one rep max of any individual, the larger their chest is going to be. There's a correlation there. So basically, the stronger you can get on your flat bench, the better off you're going to be in terms of your chest growing, having a big chest, a developed chest. So, point me, if you can get really good at this, this will definitely be the best way to overload your chest overall. So, the other thing I want to mention is, there is some kind of like caveats and there's some things that you really need to understand where you might not have the best sort of time and you might not have the best sort of um, progression rate with the barbell flat bench for things like how it feels on your shoulders or your ability to, like I said, keep making progress because of how it feels on your shoulders, injuries, the engagement it gives you. So there's a few factors that come into play there where it's not for everyone, but for most people, the most people you talk to, they will have had some, some success from growing their chest from the barbell flat bench. So we're gonna go over a few tips here. What I want you guys to focus on, I'm not gonna go too in depth, but I'm gonna give you guys some main things that I'm thinking about as I'm getting set up. So we got our bench set up here. What I'm gonna be focusing on is keeping my feet flat, especially if you're in powerlifting, if you're in a uh, USAPL in a federation, you need to keep your feet on the ground, but otherwise you can't go up on your toes. So that's kind of preference there. So as I'm getting set up, really just making sure I'm keeping my shoulder blades retracted and keeping that position down all the time. You don't want to protract your shoulders at the top or during the movement at all. It's going to not only make you less strong, but it's also going to put your shoulders at more of an advantage or at more of a disadvantage and more likely to get injured. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So as I'm getting to sit back here, so we're going over to this side so you can stay the seat. So as I'm getting set into the bench, sitting back here, I'm actually going to roll my shoulder blades back like I'm doing a row. Now I'm going to maintain that as I'm going into my position. So you can see there's an arch in my low back, my butt is on the bench. So if I was on my toes, like I was telling you, I would come back here, which I do enjoy. But if you were in a powerlifting meet, you would need to keep your feet flat. So as I get set up, I'm grabbing the bar about shoulder width, just outside shoulder width, using my fingers to get everything dialed in. I'm gonna bring my feet up a little higher, go up out of my toes. As I'm coming out of the bar, I'm keeping my shoulders retracted, keeping everything tight. I'm actually squeezing my glutes right now as well. My full body is pretty much tight. I'm focusing on bending the bar, so I'm actually trying to squeeze, trying to bend it. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to, but that's gonna create external rotation of my shoulder. As I come down, I'm keeping my elbows tight, not super tight, but they're pretty tight to my body where I'm almost layering my triceps onto my lats. Um, everything is tight here, like a rubber band weight to explode back up. See how my shoulders are still retracted? I'm not coming protracted here like this at the top. They're squeezed back, creating that arch. So as I'm coming down, just to the bottom of my chest, right at my sternum, pressing back up at the top. One thing you also notice is as I'm coming down, I'm actually pushing the bar back on the way up. I'm not going super far back, but I am not definitely going straight back up. You want to actually change the trajectory, the bar path, towards the rack itself. So that's the main things I would have you guys focus on here. Like I said, I don't want to go too in depth, but hopefully those tips give you some help and make sure you incorporate barbell flat bench into your workout routine if you have not already. Give it a shot. All right, so the second exercise that we're going to be going over and the second most crucial in my opinion is going to be the dumbbell incline bench. And you can also make the case for a barbell incline bench, but to be perfectly honest, 
as we were talking about before, the flat barbell bench is not conducive for everyone. Even though it makes sense on paper for everyone, because it allows you to actually use the most weight, not everyone has the ability to progressively overload effectively without having those shoulder problems or without actually being able to feel their chest in the correct manner. So that's where preference comes in. Either way, even if you like flat bench, dumbbell incline needs to be a solidified staple into your routine. The reason being is because since you are hitting yourself at an angle, hitting the upper chest at an angle, and you need to be at about a 45 or even less, 45 is the greatest degree you need to go, otherwise you're gonna be working a little bit more of that front delt instead of the actual pec. But it allows you to hit the upper chest more effectively than the flat bench. And the upper chest is where a lot of people are lagging that develop, including myself. This has always been something I've really worked on because I lacked that upper chest development when I first started lifting. So if you can get ahead of the game early in the career, early in your lifting years, you're gonna have better success. Like I said, it doesn't need to be any more of a degree than this. If you go up any higher than this, you're gonna start hitting more of the front delt and turn it more of a shoulder press. So I like to stay here, 45, or even a little bit lower than that. That is not going to be detrimental in any way. So, from here, we're going to go into a little bit more of the details about how to dumbbell an incline bench with a few key tips that I like to utilize in my own training. Let's get into it. Okay, so as you're getting set up here, I'm going to place the dumbbells on top of my thighs, and this is going to be very paramount, not when you're going super light, but when you start to get heavier with your dumbbells. When you get into position, you do not want to hurt your shoulders. That is the one downside to dumbbells. As you get heavier with them, it's a little bit more difficult to get into place without avoiding injury. So just be careful. Keep this tip in mind. So as I'm starting here with them on the top of my thighs, I'm gonna use the power of my legs to kick them up into position. So I'm not having to rip my shoulders out or rotator cuffs out to do it. So as I kick up here, I'm pushing one leg at a time back to get it into place. So as simultaneously, I'm gonna lean back into the bench. So here, kick, kick, back into the bench. Same thing as the flat bench. Going over to the side mark, you're going to see that I've arched my back and I also have my shoulder blades retracted once again. So as I start here, I have a full stretch of the pecs and I'm going to bring the dumbbells together at the top. So notice how the dumbbells are not like truly parallel with one another, they're on a slight 45 degree angle. This is also to protect my shoulders. So I'm bringing them down, full stretch, full range of motion, pressing together at the top. So I'm getting a stretch of the pec. And I'm almost fully shortening it at the top. That's one of the other benefits of dumbbells. So as I'm bringing them together, I'm able to actually shorten the pack, get a better squeeze at the top than I am with the actual barbell itself. So as I was saying, once I retract my shoulder blades here, you don't want to be flat backed and benching like this. Retract, dig those shoulder blades in, slight bend in those elbows, bring them together at the top. With a barbell, if you can imagine, pressing only to here. My arms don't come any closer, my hands don't come any closer. But the more my hands come together, as you can even see it, the more my chest is actually able to squeeze and shorten. And when you actually are lifting, so bicep for instance, you're lengthening and shortening the muscle. The more you can do that, the more gains, in a simple term, you're gonna be getting. The more activation, the more muscle fibers you're gonna be tearing. So therefore, more progress, more muscle. So that's why incorporating things like this has its merit, has its benefits, just like that flat bench has its benefits as well, but they're to each their own. So hopefully these tips help you guys out. We're gonna be going on to our third and final tip in just a second. Alright guys, so the last thing we're going to be going over, the third and final exercise, and to be quite honest, if you progress with these three exercises for your chest, and you sufficiently progress in terms of the volume you're doing, the amount of sets and reps with the amount of weight accordingly, you can develop your chest very well. You wouldn't have to do any other exercises, and I know that baffles a lot of people in a day and age where you see people, Julian Smith out there, all these different guys that are on the Instagram, right, showing you all these different variations, I'm the culprit of it too, right? But you need to get a solidified foundation before you start messing with all these other things because Julian Smith will tell you, he's an honest guy, that he developed his foundation and then he was able to change up the variations all the time because you have that foundation. And he's doing all these variations with a lot of muscle already. So for you to think that you need to have all these different fancy, like 
I guess bells and whistles, I guess you could say, is not the case. Anyways, I'm going on a little tangent here, but what I'm trying to close out is the third and final thing you guys need to be doing is something to fully shorten the pec. Like we were just talking about, the dumbbells get you pretty close and they allow you to use a pretty good amount of weight, but you're not able to actually bring your hands fully together. So if you see my hands right now, like right now, I'm literally squeezing my hands together. I got a pretty solid chest pump. I'm squeezing, I can feel my chest fully contracted, fully. So, as you can imagine, your brain's working, we're gonna be doing a pec fly. In this case, I'm doing a banded pec fly. This gym is pretty bare bones. You gotta be creative here, but that's okay. You don't need to have fancy equipment. You don't even need a cable machine. You might do cable flies. You might do dumbbell flies. You might do banded pec flies. You might do a, a pec deck, a machine pec fly. It does not matter. What matters is you're staying consistent because at the end of the workout here, guys, you are already fatigued. You have already done flat bench. You've already done dumbbell. Now we're gonna do higher reps and we're gonna fully shorten the pec and fatigue things out to the point where not, we're gonna kill ourselves and not be able to go and lift chest for the next week or two, but we're gonna hit a sufficient amount of volume to grow and keep doing that until we plateau and then add more volume in. That's the way it works. So this will finish off the chest here and we're gonna fully shorten the chest. So when we're coming here, I'm getting a little staggered stance so I can actually get a good solid base, otherwise I'm moving back and forth here. Full stretch, and I'm bringing my hands together. I like to keep my hands right in line with my upper chest so I can hit that upper chest once again, but really I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm also locking my elbows into place. So I'm really not, I'm imagining almost like my hands or my elbows, or my full arms I guess, are in a cast and I'm just bringing my hands together like I'm doing a giant bear hug. I'm also not rounding my shoulders over, so I'm not here with it like this, hunched over, big chest. Notice how retracting your shoulders is a common trend, right? So like I said, I'm not here like this, big chest, shoulders retracted, getting into it just like that. All right, so hopefully these tips help you guys out. If this video was something you enjoyed, I can do a lot more of these, all right? This is something that people were asking for, so I wanted to put it together. Chest is a big one for guys who want to have a big chest, you want to be looking good when you take your shirt off for the beach, for your girlfriend, for the girlfriend you want to have, right? I know, yeah, yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you're watching at this point, you definitely learned something. Don't get me wrong, I know Mark did, he already is listening to me talk all the time. But if you learned something, Drop it below. If you have questions on anything we talked about, drop them below. If you want more topics, drop them below. Please like the video. Turn on the notification bell. To make sure you see all my videos that are coming out live. Solid content, beautifully edited by my boy behind the camera. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.